Hey everyone, so thank you for watching our latest ice fishing episode from Edith Lake. And um, we had a really great time, right? Oh, it was, it was fabulous. Awesome, yeah. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a um, checklist on what we think we should bring to our next ice fishing trip and uh, some of the pros and cons when it comes to ice, ice fishing because this is still pretty new to us. So we're still trying, we're still exploring, right? Well, we've only been out a couple of times. So I think by watching this video at the end, you will have, it will save you so much time. You'll mm -hmm. have learned from all our mistakes and hopefully it brings you uh, an enjoyable ice fishing experience. Totally. So let's talk about the challenges that we had during our trip. Okay, so the first one that I can list right away was definitely the weather. Um, now, preferably the best weather is actually clear skies mm -hmm. and no wind. Yeah. And we've been out in some, um, at some lakes where the weather was very uh, snowy. So it's not in enjoyable to sit out in the snow the whole time. And then um, if it's windy, that can be a problem too. It just, it's really cold. So that's yeah. definitely something that you don't want to be if it's, you see that in the forecast when you're trying to go ice fishing, I would avoid it. Yeah, and we definitely lucked out during our trip because it was kind of like a mix of sun and clouds and it wasn't very windy. You know, it was a very light breeze. Um, so it's kind of pretty mild throughout the whole day, maybe just hovering around zero degrees. Yeah, zero, day. it went maybe a little bit up, a little bit below when the yeah. sun would um, come in and out. But yeah. generally, that's what you want, zero, nothing yeah, too far in the nothing years. too cold. Yeah, because then your your line would be freezing up and everything. Right towards the end of the day, it was a little colder because it's shaded, mm -hmm. and that's when we got into the tent and it started the heater, and that kept us pretty toasty for the rest of the day. But like you were saying too, with the weather, it's definitely if it is too cold, your line will freeze up, mm -hmm. and your line will get stuck in the line guides. And trying to reel in a fish when your line is completely frozen, you'll just well, I lost a couple because of yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and uh, snow definitely plays a crucial factor as well. <laughs> if it snows too much, not only it's unpleasant to fish in, but um, the snow covering the ice, it actually makes the water a lot darker mm -hmm. and it turns the bite right off, right? Yeah, so the one day we actually, we went out to another lake uh, before we went to Edith uh, to film this last ice fishing video. And at the beginning of the day, it, it wasn't snowing, but when we got to our spot, uh, shortly after it, it started. And so we were able to, um, actually see down into the hole and watch fish bite and when the snow started piling up onto the lake it actually made the hole completely black mm -hmm. so the fish couldn't see our bait and we could not see the fish anymore That's and right. fishing turned off yeah exactly okay so let's talk about some of the what are some of the enjoyable experiences we had during ice fishing well kind of going playing off the it was it was too dark to see down the hole i actually really like the sight fishing aspect of yeah. ice fishing and watching yeah. um, the fish chase after the bait, their behavior, then kind of check it out a little bit. And then when they grabbed it, that was super exciting. And watching the fish uh, twirl up to the top and peel your line right under the ice, that is the best part for me yeah. of ice fishing. Makes you feel like a little kid because you can look down this hole and you know the, the water's really shallow. And when the fish comes right in, it actually looks a lot bigger than it seems. Right? <laughs> the water, it definitely magnifies the fish. So yeah. it looks a couple, maybe a, what, a pound bigger even. Oh, totally, yeah. And just really exciting to, you know, whether it's going to take it or not. It's just, you know, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So the other two challenges that we had was um, when we're trying to find the fish and trying mm -hmm. to get them to bite. Mm -hmm. So finding the fish at the very beginning of the day, we, we spent about an hour doing so. Right? I, w I was really concerned. We got to the, when we got to Edith, we actually had talked to some locals uh, the day before and asking um, some advice or tips on where to go mm -hmm. because I only had been there in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, fishing and you actually never been there mm -hmm. so uh, we, we had some locals point out some spots for us but when we actually drilled the holes it was really hard because what we thought would be shallow and was near the edge it was actually quite deep so some we hit some drop-offs yeah. and we didn't think that there would be fish potentially there so we kept popping holes uh, all around this this little area and um, until and then, we found the right depth well right? We found the right depth, yeah. which was between about four to six feet, mm -hmm. but you also found what? Yeah, we found blood, so <laughs> evidence of fish being killed from the day before, mm -hmm. and that told us that there were fish around the area. And and there was, when you got mm -hmm. your first bite, it was only a few minutes after, so exactly, yeah. kind of a, a trick is you can ask people who fished it before mm -hmm. um, and look for old old spot or uh, I guess old holes where anglers had fished the previous days, and yeah. blood is a, a definite a key. Uh, point to where fish are. Yeah, and the other challenge is getting them to bite. Once we find the fish, and it was, you know, it, it, it do need to 
you know, perform some tricks to get into the bite, right? Yeah, yeah. well, okay, so the last time we went, I went ice fishing was at Tanqua. Mm -hmm. And when we were there, uh, we're targeting rainbows. And so they like a jigging method. So yeah. you're kind of lifting the rod up slowly and, and dropping it down um, to get the bait kind of uh, to make a, like a little fl almost flickering motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they did not like that. Yeah. And I was, you actually go out in the video at one point to scout mm -hmm. and I keep jigging and when he leaves he just drops his rod it's sitting there and there's some bites so it was actually um, just the way we the presentation was a challenge in itself yeah, yeah. I find that for most of the time that the uh, the brook cha actually prefer the bait just suspended being suspended and not moving they were lazy and they were just very lazy biters so they'll come in they see something they see a piece of bait sitting in water not moving and they'll bite it and if it's moving, they actually turn around and swim away. So let's talk about the terminal tackle that we use. It's, it's pretty simple. And that's what makes ice fishing so easy. You know, it's, it's, uh, you don't need very expensive equipment, right? Nope. And it's, it's, not a, it's an easy rig. So you have your, you have your little ice fishing rods. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. A small, the smaller reels, so right? So these you are the smallest uh, Shimano spinning reels you can get. And uh, you want the smallest one, so smallest one to uh, balance with the small the short ice fishing rod, right? And the terminal setup is very simple. It's a, you know, you have to line, at the end of the line, just tie a little jig head onto it, right? Yeah. So. I, I tried a bigger one, but I don't think it worked. The hook was too big. Yeah. And they didn't like seeing the hook. Yeah. When I first started out ice fishing, I actually used pretty big hooks. And I, I think that didn't work so well. Um, these fish are pretty, um, I think they're pretty shy. Well, it's shy and maybe yeah. pressured too. They've seen yeah, a lot of, exactly. there was a lot of anglers out yeah. that day. So tiny presentations like this one. So this jig head here is probably only about 132 ounce. And um, this hook size is probably six or eight, I think. Uh, really, really small. And um, so you can use several different types of bait. Um, so you got, what do you have there? I have the, well, the, the, for bait? Yeah, for bait, yeah. For bait, I was going to say the rod is the exact same setup. So yeah. one of the first things that we tried were mealworms. And you can get these at any local pet store. Uh, we just actually went to, I went to PetSmart before our trip. Um, and I actually put on, they're, they're very small. Um, some of them come in uh, larger sizes, um, but I would put on about three to a hook. Yep. And fish, they really do like them. They wiggle around mm -hmm. in the water uh, for, well, for a small amount of time yep. and mm -hmm. uh, they give off a bit of a scent. So that's something you can use. Yep. Um, it's nothing too intimidating or too mm -hmm. bright and yep. it looks uh, very right. natural. Right. We also have, do you want me to bring it out? Yeah, so we've got our <laughs> ice fishing bucket on the side. So we have, I'll let, do you want me to So you this is it? a daily shrimp <laughs> that you can buy from the grocery store. And um, it's red because it has been cured in Pasky bait fire chew, so red fire chew. So you just sprinkle um, into the bag with the shrimp and shake it around, let it sit for half an hour and it's ready to go. So the purpose of the cure is to make it, make the, uh, to harden the shrimps, but also to give it some extra scent. This is very, very smelly, so we're gonna put this away. I, I was going to say this was, this <laughs> hasn't really been taken care of since our trip a few days ago, so yeah. that's why I passed it off to Rod. So exactly, yeah. It. So you can use daily shrimp, you can use krill as well. Um, the other bait that we found worked really well was this um, Pasky bait, fire bait. Um, this one is chartreuse, um, which stand out really well in that dark water I found. And um, it comes in, it's a paste, it comes in a jar, and it doesn't have to be kept in the fridge, you can just keep it in your room uh, until you want to use it. So to use this, you just have to pick some up and roll into the tiny bowl and uh, just kind of rub it onto the, uh, I won't do it, but just rub it into the jig head. And just, I, I like to cover the, um, the actual head with the uh, bait and, that, and leave the uh, point of the hook exposed. And that seems to work pretty well. I was quite surprised how, this, how well this works. That was, the brookies were on it like no <laughs> yeah. other. I was trying, so I, th I can't remember what I started off with. I think I started off with the, the piece of shrimp. Mm -hmm, yeah. And, and you said that you wanted to try this out because mm -hmm. you had never tried it before. And so I, I, I did, I had, I think I had a different jig, yeah. the, the shrimp, yeah. and it wasn't until we actually switched it up mm -hmm. to this, the brookies were biting. The brookies exactly. liked it more than the rainbow. Oh, totally, yeah, yeah. There were times I, I would drop this into the water and before the bait even hit the bottom and the fish was on it, 
if there were fish around. So that's how well it was working. Well, the, yeah, the bright and then the scent slowly melts because of the, uh, it's like a, a foam almost, yeah, right? So it exactly, just kind of melts yeah. in the water yeah. and the scent trail. Yeah, you can, tell, you can, you can see a fluorescent uh, green scent trail behind the bait. It was kind of neat. It was in, all over the ice. Our, yeah, in our GoPro uh, video as well. So anyways, so here we, uh, so that's the thermal tackle set up. Oh, and, one more. Oh yeah, so what else do we need? We need the auger because yeah. that you need, so you have your ice fishing rods, your reels, jigs, the bait. But you cannot go ice fishing unless you have an auger. Yeah. And what an auger is, it's, a, it's a, just a drill that you use. Um, you can buy them where it's manual and you drill the hole yourself or mm -hmm. ones that actually uh, have a motor. And uh, you just press a button and it drills it for you. But you definitely need a sharp auger. Yeah. If you have one that's it's dull, it's a lot more harder. We actually were really lucky. We had a brand new one that we brought yeah. on the trip. Mm -hmm. And it's even harder for me. So yeah. I had Rod drilling all the holes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely the, the, the blade has to be really sharp, otherwise you wouldn't be fishing at all for, for that day. Um, you can get di different sizes, so six inches diameter or eight inch. So I think we have the six. We have the um, six yeah. and I would almost prefer the eight yeah. because it's so stressful when you get those fish and they're close to the, the top and you're hoping that they can fit yeah. up through the hole. Yeah. I've had it several times yeah. where I'm panicking because it's a little bit too small. Yeah, exactly. So if, you have, if it's bigger, you have more room to work with, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's um. So we have a checklist for you. Our top ten must bring to um for ice fishing trip. Um, <laughs> besides the uh, fishing rod and reel. So what are the what? Are the, so let's you start. So okay, what are the things so we bring? the top ten. We we figured this out. We definitely the first time you took me ice fishing a couple of years ago, we didn't have half this stuff. Mm -hmm. The second time we went ice fishing, we didn't have half this stuff and. Even this last trip, we didn't have all of it. Yeah. So this is stuff that you must bring if you want to have an enjoyable ice fishing yeah, trip. Totally. Yeah, totally. First thing I'm going to say is an ice fishing tent. Um, now, two reasons. Just in case the weather changes while you're out there, um, it's a nice place, a nice shelter to go into uh, to keep you warm. And also, too, if, um, for, for the sight fishing aspect of it. Yeah. Now, what we did was when we had the tent set up, we, we drilled a couple of holes. So we had our bait down one and then another hole was beside us. So you actually could see down that one where your bait was. Yeah. That's a good way to kind of explain yeah, exactly. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's, it's warmer and it's when it, it's super dark in the tent, you mm -hmm. actually can see um, the hole really glows. Yeah. And you can see everything down there. Yeah, totally. So inside the tent, it's, it's totally dark, like you say, but there's light going underneath the lake. So that's why it's a lot brighter down there and it's a lot dark. And the fish can't see you that way as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think that they're not as freaked out. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. if you're out in the open and you have all these holes drilled, a lot mm -hmm. more light can come through. Yeah. And if you're out, if you're not in a tent, the only way you actually can really see down the hole to see if you're deep enough and if there's fish around is by lying on the ice, yeah. which actually brings me to the next thing that I want to talk about and is a mat. Yeah. So why do we need a mat rod? So having a mat, if, instead of laying on top of the ice and get all wet, having a mat, you can actually stay dry while you're watching through that hole, right? Mm -hmm. So even some sort of mat, or like uh, those kids' mats, mm -hmm. I think you have some yeah. upstairs, or like uh, a tarp to lay around the hole so that when you're actually, uh, you see in the video multiple times where rods and my faces are, are stuck to the ice, yeah. it'll, it'll just keep you dry. Exactly, yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, I was pretty soaked. Yeah. And speaking of staying dry and warm, um, we definitely need a heater inside the tent. That's, um, that's a must have. It was my favorite thing. You know how nice it is to go into a tent that has, we had the heater set up mm -hmm. in the tent. Um, and whenever we got cold or if we, when we had lunch, I was able to sit in the tent and, yeah. and dry off. So a heater is another great thing. Yeah. And keeping, keeping the line ice free as well, right? Yeah, yeah that was totally. actually true because yeah. there's so many times where it just, everything would, would freeze up here and, um, the line to the reel around the bale and the eyelets. And so when you're in the tent, just it, the air is warmer and nothing freezes up. Yep. So it's not as uh, scary when you're yep. reeling in fish. Right. So number four, um, warm drinks and food. Right. I was so happy. Yep. You should tell them what you did for yep. me. So you, you don't normally eat or drink while you fish. Actually, no. I don't either. But having um, instant noodles halfway through the day it's uh, such a big... Um, it tasted so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it warms you right up. They just say that, right? And uh, it keeps you going for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Or even just hot chocolate and tea um, be, be really nice. It's a must bring, so... 
So yeah. yeah, thermos with boiling water and then you just pour it right into your noodle cups and mm -hmm. you're ready to go. Yeah. Okay, next thing is sunglasses. And I'm saying this because my eyes are so sensitive and I, I had my glasses on all day, but having no sunglasses was a bad idea because it's so bright, especially if it's sunny out, the reflection off the snow. Um, you're squinting the whole time and then at the end of the day, I actually had a pretty bad headache. Yeah. So I would bring sunglasses uh, for yourselves. And yeah. maybe, I don't know if you need polarized because you're not really looking into water, mm -hmm. but polarized sunglasses when I'm on any fishing trip is my favorite. Yeah, just to protect your eyes, right? So bathymetric map is another one you should have, mm -hmm. right? Um, because once the lake is covered with ice, you don't know how deep uh, where every, you know, you have no Every idea how deep you're fishing until we actually drill a hole. But with the map, you can kind of tell, um, you know, which location you should be at and how deep you should be fishing at, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if you can buy these maps. Um, some of them come in, you know, these I guess freshwater BC fishing guides. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you even type it in on online, just Google a certain map and then type your bathymetric map after, yeah. um, it should pop up and it just shows the depth rings around. Yeah, there are quite a few websites where you can download PDF files. Can of you? The maps, oh, I've, so. Yeah, I've just gone yeah. into images normally. Yeah. So the next one, um, so we got the map, but also a sounder. So we, we got mixed opinions on this one right here, right? Did you really like the sounder? I didn't like the sounder too much um, because it's kind of distracting. I rather I, I really enjoy watching the fish biting through the hole rather than looking at the sound, looking at the graph, um, waiting for the fish to come by. Yeah. Yeah. So, but um, we've we have friends who use it all the time and they do really well by by watching it. That yeah. that's one thing I honestly mm -hmm. don't know how to read them. Yeah. Like I get that the little dots are fish, mm -hmm. but I don't understand like I don't totally yeah. understand it and I just rather be able to see the fish yeah. right because then I can watch how they're behaving if you if you're sitting there and you see like the sounders telling you there's mm -hmm. fish I don't really know how to react or what I should do if, if they're right beside my bait if they're nibbling so I yeah. personally like to see it directly with right exactly with yeah. but um, but it's worth trying um, if, it, if it helps you so what's uh, what else okay so next thing is a sled and this is not for sledding down hills when you're bored or if you're not catching fish, even though that's fun. And I did try to ask Rod to do that with me this last fishing trip. Um, but the sled is actually to hold all your equipment um, because sometimes you need to actually travel to another end of the lake and to carry all these things that we've listed, plus all your terminal tackle, it would be a, a disaster. So I just throw it all in the sled. We actually had it all packed in your truck. So we just mm -hmm. teamwork carried it out together plopped it onto the lake and we just pulled yep. and uh, it was really easy setup and um, yeah, yeah, just easy. And easy at the setup. end of the day, it's a lot easier to push everything back into the truck and off we go, right? Instead mm -hmm. of spending 20 minutes to pack everything up, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. And so the last two, um, so clothing, waterproof, proper waterproof clothing and boots, um, <laughs> really important, right? Yeah. I think the first couple of times we didn't dress properly. I wore and, my waders. Yeah, and we got really cold. Um, this last two trips, um, we brought snow boots and proper um, snow pants and jackets and extra pairs know. of mittens. Yeah, hats, yeah. everything. So staying dry and warm, it's really important if you want to be out there um, for six to eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> I know people are thinking we're not going to stay up for six to eight hours, yeah. but we were out from early morning to we were the last people I think yeah. almost each day on the lake yeah so at six hours we are out from 10 o'clock until four o'clock in the afternoon so because a lot of times the, the fish are biting towards the end of the day right so you want to stay out longer yeah finally uh, so the last one is is a bucket now this can be used in two different two different ways uh, buckets can be used to hold the fish so instead of placing them on the on the snow I actually I didn't have, I didn't bring a cooler, I didn't bring any Ziploc bags, so I didn't have anywhere to put the fish. And uh, so we actually put them in the bucket. And if you don't want to use a bucket to hold your fish in, it's actually nice to have it as a chair. Yeah. So if you want to bring fold-up chairs, you can, mm -hmm. but I was totally fine with the bucket because then it served two purposes of, yeah. of a cooler for the fish and um, just a place to sit down when I didn't want to be sitting on the snow anymore. Yeah, cooler for the fish, but also to hold your bait as well, right? Yeah, so we have it chug, right here. <laughs> I can chug a bait in there as well, yeah. So there you have it. You have Rod and Kitty's top 10 ice fishing items to bring for when you're going out on an ice fishing trip. 
Um, hopefully these items will be super helpful for you. We obviously didn't bring them for each of our trips mm -hmm. and uh, it's definitely handy to keep in mind. And one last important thing is you got to check your regulations. So pick up a copy of this, the Freshwater Regulation Synopsis, or you can download, download it online from the website as well. Um, just make sure you check whether the lake is open for ice fishing mm -hmm. and check the uh, daily quarter of fish that you can keep. Um, it's different for every lake. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, some only require, you only can keep a couple species of one and then the other species you can keep a little bit more and uh, different sizes as well. Mm -hmm. So our ice fishing season in British Columbia goes right until the end of March and uh, so hopefully you can get out and try this excellent fishery out. Yeah, it's, it's, quite, a, it's quite an awesome experience. Yep. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, be sure to message us on Facebook, Instagram, or email us at info at fishingwithrod.com. And uh, check out the website for more information as well. So until next time, good luck fishing. Oh! Rod, yes! <laughs> Another one. Yes! That's a little small, eh? It's, no, that's yeah. like... Uh, standard size. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another brook trout. Beauty. Look at this fish. It's beauty. Oh, I can't believe it. I, you know what? I knew I had a bite. I should have checked it. I have a big piece of prawn on, so, or shrimp. God, why did you kill a little tiddler?